Welcome back to this Let's Play of Kerbal Space Program Release 1.0.5. Now, the more observant of you will have noticed we are not yet on the launch pad, as you might have expected if you'd watched the previous episode. And that's because the more observant of you, like myself, spotted a few problems. And I have a list in front of me, so let's just crack on and have a look at those problems. Now, the first problem is not so much of a, a problem, really. Um, it's the fact that my KOS scripts require uh, a little more space in the script module than is available by default. Uh, the default space is 10,000 bytes, and my scripts actually need a little bit more than that. So we will add uh, another 10,000. It does increase the cost and the mass, but negligibly so for the size of the vehicle that we have so uh, that's uh, problem one uh, solved uh, the second was if you look very closely uh, you'll notice we don't have a Kerbal engineering module anywhere on this vessel so let's go over to I think it's science items and pick up our Kerbal engineering module and just stick one such module there on the side again it's not uh, it's not absolutely essential uh, but it does help providing those heads up displays uh, for our ascent and various other maneuvers but we carry on uh, next on the list is uh, shoot recovery now if you read the shoot recovery mod page it does give you some guidelines on how to configure your parachutes so that they don't rip off when uh, whenever you deploy them for recovery and it suggests you should increase your minimum pressure to uh, 0.5 so let's do that or near enough so that's about uh, 0.5 that should be enough that's, that's close enough so that should be that pair and if we check this pair here we go let's just set that one to about 0.5 as well. Now, for different situations, you may have to change that to a different value, but from the uh, the uh, web page, the defaults seem to work pretty well. Now, that's not everything. There was one thing that I really didn't spot, but if you look very closely, there is a problem here with the positioning of the landing struts and lights, and it's most easily seen if you look at the position of these photovoltaic panels. Basically, the lights and the landing legs are offset from center. So let's just correct that. So we need six of those. So there we go. Let's just position the lights there and then do the same for our landing legs. So that corrects that. And I think if I check my list here, we've got uh, landing legs and lights, shoot, script memory, uh, memory uh, script memory, and the Kerbal engineering device. But as it was also pointed out to me, I can't count. Now, if we have to uh, retrieve 1,150 units of ore, and each of these tanks can take 300 then four tanks in total would have been enough. For some reason, I had 1,500 units of ore in place, so six tanks would have been required. But at this point, I'm not gonna change it. It would mean changing the symmetry on a whole load of other parts, so I'm not going to correct that either. Okay, so let's save our corrected vessel and pop outside and just deal with the problem that our mass is higher, substantially so, than our launch pad. So we need to upgrade the launch pad. Outside in KSC, we can uh, right click the launch pad and select upgrade. That'll give us an unlimited vessel size and weight. It's 282,000. Uh, which is uh, slightly more than half of our current funds. So we're burning through the funds rather quickly. But let's do that. We have no choice at this point. And instead of popping back into the VAB, let's just uh, click on our pad and we can actually select to launch this vehicle 
with this crew directly from the pad. Uh, so let's do that. So let's go and pick that and get on with a launch. Right, so you can see we are on the launch pad, all ready to launch. And we've not launched such a large vehicle before, but we're going to use our standard uh, launch procedure. So uh, let's run our initialization uh, KOS script, and that's the script that requires that additional memory to load in uh, to the device's memory all the additional scripts we're going to run. And of those, uh, the main script is our Ascend8 uh, script, uh, we're going to use the uh, default uh, values for that, and we're going to run our launch. So let's go and do that launch. Now you can see we have all of our engines running. We have uh, the central engine here and all of our boosters. They are attached in an asparagus fashion. You can see the uh, fuel lines here and just in there so we should be expecting uh, these outer uh, these outer engines to be disposed of first now you'll have just probably heard in the background if you didn't actually see it uh, you could see that our kos script has kicked in and is now managing the throttle in order to keep our thrust to weight ratio at around about two uh, that's uh, one uh, to overcome gravity and another one to actually accelerate at a reasonable pace into space. So two is a fairly good uh, value there for us to choose as parameters for our script. Now we're about to lose our first booster. So these are the ones, there you go, on the outside there, top and bottom. And you notice the parachutes haven't uh, deployed immediately. They're waiting for that extra uh, air pressure in order to actually uh, deploy. Uh, so uh, hopefully they don't crash onto any of our buildings down below. But again, KOS is managing our uh, throttle. Uh, we are just at a thrust to weight ratio of just over two. So you can see the calculated thrust uh, that we need to maintain about two is just slightly below maximum. So uh, uh, that's the advantage of the liquid boosters that you can actually manage their throttle. Uh, you can't do that for the solid fuel boosters, even if they were powerful enough to launch this monstrosity into space. But uh, Bob and Jeb seem happy enough with the way the flight is proceeding. We are now at our apoapsis of 46, 47 kilometers. Uh, we are turning over quite nicely. We're just beyond uh, 40 degrees. You can see that being displayed here as well as part of the calculation of our script. We've just got a sort of linear curve, if you can call a linear curve a curve, just a, a standard sort of curve across uh, to do a sort of pseudo gravity turn. Now we've reached an angle, a target angle of about 30 degrees, so we've now got maximum throttle for the rest of our ascent up to a total of uh, 100 kilometers. You can just see here we're at 75 now, our, our predicted apoapsis, so everything's going pretty much to plan. Our actual altitude here is 46 kilometers. Uh, 92 kilometer apoapsis and engine cut off. There we go, engine cut off complete. Now we've barely got uh, any fuel left in these outer tanks uh, at all, so we will dispose of uh, those as they drift uh, slowly to uh, one side, and we will also dispose of our fairings to, re uh, to reveal. Uh, to reveal our craft. Now, carry on with our standard process. So let's run our uh, circularization script to create our circularization uh, node. You can just see the blue marker here. So let's uh, just pull ourselves over to pre-align with that uh, blue marker. We just reached space. You can just about hear the music uh, starting in the background there chatterer 
chatting away as well. So we're roughly uh, roughly aligned. So let's run our node execution script uh, just to uh, execute that node. There we go. We just snapped uh, to the node as part of the script. Uh, so there we go. So that's all done. And while we wait, I think we should uh, extend our panels just so we don't forget uh, to do that. So we've got six of those. Oops. We've got six of those as well. So let's get all those extended. So where's the other ones? There we go. There's one more. And finally this one here. Now our uh, booster rockets there will slowly descend back down to Kerbin and again their parachute should open very near the surface and hopefully save us a little bit of funds. Uh, so uh, what are we doing? We're going to be firing at 49. There we go. Uh, so we're uh, clear of our booster rockets as they fall back down to the surface uh, as our orange tank now, our completely full orange tank as a result of our uh, as a result of our uh, efforts of asparagus staging is going to be plenty enough. We've got uh, what, 880 Delta V and our current stage has over 2,000 left in it. So that's, uh, that's plenty of Delta V available. Uh, we've, got plenty of, uh, we've got plenty of battery charge on here. We shouldn't be problems with battery. Nice big tank of RCS there for our docking manoeuvres. So I think we're, I think we're fine uh, for everything else, we, uh, the supplies should last us uh, a pretty long time. The only thing I maybe made a slight mistake on, is, <laughs> apart from all the other mistakes we, went, we made, uh, was the positioning of the solar panels. As you can see, they are very much in shadow of the tank, so so that hasn't worked out uh, ideally. But we've got plenty of panels. That shouldn't be that shouldn't be enough. That shouldn't be a problem. Uh, for us. So we're about halfway through our burn, a little bit over halfway, uh, 390 odd Delta V still to go. Maneuver is uh, going to plan full throttle uh, until we get right down to the last little dribble. Now the execution node as we see, uh, script as we've seen before isn't perfect but it's perfectly sufficient for our needs in this case, so uh, let's just let it burn off the uh, the remaining 150 delta V. So 100 to go. There we go. Camera flips. We are now in orbit, and uh, it's very little uh, delta V left to burn to get you in orbit. We're a little bit short. Uh, we were about uh, where are we? About 25 meters per second short. So if we just pop into map view that gives us a periapsis of 97 and aperapsis 103. So that's actually pretty good. That's actually pretty good. That's perfectly uh, acceptable for a circularization maneuver since we don't intend staying here very long. We intend going out to Minmus. So I think we're going to uh, cut this section here and we will rejoin our intrepid pilots when we arrive near Minmus. Well, we've now arrived in the sphere of influence of Minmus, and I've set the Minmus Station 1 as our target, because we're going to have to dock up and swap Bill and Bob, because we need an engineer on the ground uh, to help us connect up our Kerbal attachment system pipes in order to um, join up our two vessels on the ground to transfer the ore. Uh, so we're going to have to dock with that, so let's get... Uh, a manoeuvre in place around about our periapsis, which is about uh, 90, I think it's 98, there we go, 98 uh, kilometres. So let's just pull here now on the retrograde handle and just bring in, there we go, just bring in our uh, orbit. So that's us uh, captured. Now we just need to see if we can adjust our, uh, adjust our position uh, and maneuver node so that we can get an approach and rendezvous on our first attempt there we go so we're we're pretty close let's just close right in 
Uh, now I think we probably need to move towards our AN. So let's just drag that forward and then pull back a little, I think, on our... Here we go. So that's pretty good. So let's see if we can't split the difference. So what's that? Uh, what's that distance? 1.9 kilometers. That's actually not bad. So it's not going to be on the first attempt. We're going to have to swing round, uh, swing round, and then come right in and complete the maneuver uh, on the, the approach maneuver. That is on our uh, second swing round. So that's actually not so bad. We can probably uh, use precise node to make it a little bit better, but. Maybe not, maybe not. Let's have a look, a quick look. Let's just add or subtract 0.1. Now, I don't think we're going to be able to make uh, too much of an improvement, 1.8. So let's just uh, let's just complete uh, that manoeuvre. Let's first get ourselves uh, pre-aligned. It's got 150 metres per second of delta V to burn. There we go, so it's pretty much on retrograde. So we have got uh, uh, a little bit of an angle to make up when we complete our final approach. So let's get that pre-aligned. There we go. So then we can bring up our KOS window and just run our node script as usual. Now I have actually throttled back uh, the limit on the engine. So although we have got a very powerful engine if we go back out of map mode uh, have throttled it down to 11.5 percent of maximum makes it easier to do some of the uh, more uh, sensitive maneuvers the ones that have much much less delta v than your engine is usually capable of generating now in this case um, we will have a 66 second burn that's what the uh, calculation has uh, made for our script but if I just press control script uh, control script uh, control C uh, and abort the script and then change our thrust limit back up let's get out of the window and then go back up if I now uh, change my here we go if I now rerun that you'll see this has now gone down to uh, at 7.6 second burn so that uh, almost 10 times faster for almost 10 times the throttle so uh, uh, that will save us a little bit of time now there's not much fuel left in here it's about uh, about half the remaining fuel so we will fling this orange tank into space uh, once we've completed the maneuver and uh, finish off uh, the rest of our maneuvering using uh, this much smaller engine in here uh, the poodle engine and then this tank in here now it doesn't have a probe core this orange tank so we are going to have to uh, terminate it at some point because we are rather uh, collecting a lot of debris around Minmus which is not uh, not ideal we're going to hit some of it at some point so let's just uh, warp to here uh, that'll bring us uh, much closer to our maneuver node, save a little bit of time. Uh, there's our space station whizzing past. There we go, time warp complete. Uh, we have two minutes uh, to our node and uh, the script is going to align at one minute and uh, four seconds. So we can still time warp ahead just a little bit. We've just got to keep an eye on this figure down here in the corner. There we go. So uh, we should be now script aligning. There we go. You can just about see the nav ball moving right there. So uh, we're going to go on uh, just under four seconds. So again, we can time warp forward to uh, let's say just less than 10 seconds there we go and there's the script cutting in and bringing us around so we can see our orbit curving in And there we are, 
done. So that's pretty good. Let's just re-establish our uh, target. Uh, so we are a little bit, a little bit off. So what we will do is we will set up uh, another maneuver node over here, just to do a very, very slight, uh, a very slight adjustment. So let's see which adjustment should we make. We are a little bit behind. So let's see if we can't bring ourselves a little bit closer. So what's that? 13 kilometers. Let's see if we can't bring ourselves in a little and then reduce. There we go. So 0 0.8. So we're back to 0 0.8. Now this is where uh, thrust limiting will help a lot. Uh, so uh, we're just actually slightly over intersection there, aren't we? This is where um, throttling back on our tank will help. This is way too big an engine to be making these sorts of very, very tiny adjustments. So we'll throttle right back to uh, just 6%. That's probably as low, 5.5, 6% is probably as low as we can actually do. So uh, let's uh, pre-align. But I think for such a small maneuver, we'll actually try doing the maneuver manually. So just bring it around. There we go. Just a little bit over, I think. There we are. So we're going to do warp around to our maneuver node. So we'll press that rather handy, uh, handy handle. And here we are approaching our maneuver node now. So there we are. Time warp has completed. Uh, we are on node. So it's going to be a very, very tiny burn. So we should take it down to. Uh, about uh, well, let's give it about 20 seconds because we're going to do a very very slow burn with a very very low throttle there we go We're just going to dribble it out very, very slowly. So you can just see our, uh, our orbit changing. There we go, so one tiny amount left. So we can now just dribble out what remains and just watch as our separation closes in. There we go, 300 meters, absolutely perfect. <laughs> the only thing that's slightly not perfect is we now have to jettison this large orange tank, which is going to be coming within 300 metres of our station. Uh, but if we give it a bit of a fling uh, as we release it, hopefully it won't be quite that close. So let's give it a nice good spin and detach it. There we go. So hopefully that will now, um, over the course of its orbit, uh, fly quite a long way out of the plane of our station. <laughs> but we will, <laughs> uh, we will have to deal with all this garbage and trash later. Uh, so uh, we're on our way to uh, look at that fling. Rather took us out of uh, our target's uh, orbit. So let's just get. Uh, ready to, um, where are we, where's the target retrograde, there's our target retrograde and our retrograde is over there so uh, we should be able to bring that back in 
Perhaps we'll wait until... <laughs> I said we should. One of the things uh, we may have to uh, check is whether we have an active engine. Uh, we haven't got an active engine because we um, uh, detached uh, without using the proper staging. So let's just activate uh, the engine. So uh, now we can think about uh, just fine tuning our approach. So let's go uh, and uh, because we're completely on the opposite side of our body uh, let's just um, go in the right direction there we go 2.6 there we go oh too far again <laughs> i think we'll leave we'll think we'll leave fine tuning the approach until we get a little bit closer so let's just warp our way uh, around to here uh, because of the, the distance we had and our relative distance to the station, even the slightest uh, change was rather um, being amplified, shall we say. And we do have quite a powerful engine, of course. And again, I hadn't thrust limited in order to take advantage of um, dribbling out our Delta V. Where is, that? Where is our target? That's probably, uh, that's probably what's left of our debris, uh, nine, nine kilometres away. Uh, so um, that's some other debris we're still looking for. So uh, if we look, our station is up here somewhere. There we go, 6.2 kilometers. Uh, so we can start adjusting our relative velocity now and herd our retrograde marker across. So let's just do that now. So we're trying to keep our orange marker kind of in a diagonal line with the pink Y in order to herd the retrograde marker uh, towards that pink Y. So we're 5.4 uh, kilometres away. Uh, we won't rush towards the target. We won't thrust towards the target. 18 metres per second is more than enough. Instead, we'll use time warp as usual, just keeping an eye on where the retrograde marker is drifting. If it starts drifting away, then we'll start herding it back. So uh, that's uh, times five, so let's go up to times 10. And we can see that we're now starting to close in. And our retrograde marker is staying pretty much on track, just slightly off, which means we're just gonna slightly glide past the station, which is exactly what we're after. There we go, we're coming up to one and a half kilometers. There we are, we're just coming up to a kilometer. So let's just start bringing our target relative speed down as we start getting closer. So again, we're using our direction, our heading, and our target marker and just herding the retrograde marker onto that uh, target marker. There we go. So we're now down to 12 uh, meters per second, still a healthy speed to be approaching our station. And the further away our uh, directional marker is from our target marker, the greater the effect of changing direction and the less effect of losing target relative speed. So let's start getting much, much closer into the two markers now. We're slightly off to this side. So let's just bring it back. There we are. So 10 meters per second now, and we really want to start watching our distance and keeping those two markers together without uh, without going too far past our station or crashing into it. Uh, that are, those are the two worst things you can do. The only other thing you can do is actually get it right. So uh, we've only got a one in three chance of getting it right. So our two markers are still pretty much online. You can start seeing the bottom of the station now. We actually want to dock up here at the top. So we're 300 meters away, 10 meters per second. So again, just let it slowly drift in. There's no need to rush. 
So 200 meters, let's start bringing down our target relative speed again. Just move off very slightly down to the bottom left of the nav ball, just slowly keeping track top right, there we go. So we're now very, very slow, 1.8 relative speed. And let's just drift in towards. Now, like I say, we've got, uh, this is the docking port we want to use and the standard docking port is actually up here at the top. So let's get ourselves right in, about uh, 20 or 30 meters away and then we can start our docking procedure. We've got plenty of fuel. Uh, there's probably still a, a, an amount of fuel in here if we'd run dry, so uh, we should be fine for fuel. We, we won't need that much fuel for docking. We'll need most of the fuel for lifting this darn load of ore off the surface and getting it back to Kerbin. Uh, that's where we'll need most of the fuel, but it'd still be it still probably be quite an excess. We've got 1,600 Delta V in this state. That should be fine. So we're just under uh, 90 meters now. We're at 75 meters. Looks like we should be uh, should be missing any of the fins, but this is actually quite. Um, the habitation ring has quite a radius to it, so I think what we're going to do is we are going to bring ourselves to a stop. So there we go, one meter per second and kill. There we go. So uh, we are now um, pretty much parked up next to the station. So what I'm going to do is just bring us around to uh, north south and just use our main engine just to dribble a little bit of velocity uh, vertically just to bring us. Uh, up to the top of the station. Could it take quite a long time using RCS uh, to get us to the top of the station? So let's just power our way up to the top of the station and then bring us around ready to transfer into docking mode. So there we are. Bring us on to our retrograde marker. We're ignoring the target retrograde marker now because all we're doing is just maneuvering up the station. So while we're waiting, uh, let's uh, control from here, because that's where we want to actually do the docking maneuver from. So right click and then select control from here. And up here at the top is where we want to uh, target. So let's target that Clampertron docking port there at the top. So we're almost parallel with it now. And then we'll just finally use our engine to bring us to a halt just a little bit above uh, where we want to dock. There we go. There we are. So I'm going to leave it just drifting up just very, very slightly. And let's bring ourselves up uh, the docking alignment indicator. So we're pretty much parallel. We did that pretty much by eye. Uh, so we can use uh, the usual W, A, S and D keys to do that. Uh, we can use, it's not essential, but we can use the uh, Q and E keys uh, to orientate uh, the capsules. Uh, so I'll just orientate it uh, 180 degrees around. And now we can start using the RCS and the alternate keys uh, just to manoeuvre the uh, retrograde marker into this sort of quadrant here which will draw the crosshairs uh, towards us. So let's just do that now. Let's bring it across and bring it up and again the further away this yellow marker is the quicker these two green crosshairs will come in towards the centre.
And I'm just going to kill off some of our uh, vertical speed. You can see we're just vertically going away by 0.02 of a meter. So we're not going to be drifting away in the vertical direction. All of this speed is now horizontal across this diagonal. So we're going to keep this lined up with the center in order to sort of pull across this crosshair here. So let's just start bringing it back in. So bringing it a bit over to the right, more to the center, and then bringing it down. So let's bring it down and more into the center. So we're almost all lined up now. So it's probably about time that we start moving forward. There we go, we're just slightly moving forward. And we're a little bit off to one side, so let's just bring this marker over to the left and you can start seeing the green horizontal line coming in. Let's thrust forward. So we should be almost directly above it now. So if we look, up, uh, take a, a look here from the top, you can see we're almost perfectly lined up above it. Again, this is one of the things you don't want to rush through. Looks like we are slightly off center, so let's just correct for that. Just using the uh, W key just to lift us there. And I think we're now bang on, so let's thrust forward. Green crosshairs are just separating a bit, so let's just correct for that. But very soon magnetism will take over and draw us together. Just see how far we are apart. Here we go. Brilliant! <laughs> Excellent job! So uh, we're ready to transfer the crew now. Uh, so uh, I think what I'm going to do is just pop on down to the surface of Minmus and just check on uh, how Val's getting on. Well, Val's been uh, mining away for a few days now. Uh, both drills are still operating. Uh, so let's just check. She has got uh, full tanks. Uh, she's got 75 ore in uh, both of these tanks. Uh, so it looks like we're doing pretty well in our mining operation. So I think in the next episode, we will bring down the oil tanker and start transferring the uh, booty that Val has collected. So I'd like to thank you for watching, and I hope to see you again soon. Take care. Bye-bye.